Welcome to WIPLD video tutorial. WIPLD ProCAD is an extension of the WIPLD flagship product WIPLD Pro. Before start working on this task, it is recommended that user successfully completes the previous training task. In this video, we will demonstrate modeling and simulation of the patch antenna with finite ground plane and one symmetry plane. The first action after invoking WIPLD Pro CAD is to select New Project. Next, the project should be saved under the name MPA. Before we create a geometry, the model units should be set as appropriate. The units for frequency and length are expressed in gigahertz and millimeters respectively. The other units are kept as defaults. The next step is setting the operation mode. In this case, the operation mode should be set to one of the antenna modes. For simulating a single antenna, both one generator at a time and all generators modes can be used. We set the operation mode to antenna, one generator at a time. The next step is defining a frequency range for the antenna simulation. The patch antenna will be simulated in the frequency range between 9 GHz and 11 GHz. We need to define symbols which will represent the dimensions of the patch antenna. After the symbols table is opened, we can add width and height of the patch. After this is done, we add X position of the wire, acting the probe wire radius, substrate thickness, parameters of use dielectric, substrate dimensions and a symbol defining Whipple the option edge. To define antenna geometry, we use built-in primitives. We start by creating a cuboid which represents a substrate of the patch antenna. Actually, we define cuboid position, the opposite base corner and the height of the cuboid. In order to exit drawing mode, we can press Escape key or select option Reset from the pop-up menu. Now, we select top base face and align coordinate system to the selected face. The next body to be created is a rectangle which represents a patch. In order to define a rectangle, we define first rectangle point and diagonally opposite rectangle point. Then we exit the drawing mode. In printed structures, with a thin substrate it is always recommended to apply the imaging, the same or similar mesh on both sides of the substrate. Imaging is introduced in order to obtain a more accurate result. Therefore, in this task it is recommended to have the same mesh on both the top and the base of the cuboid. Let's select previously created rectangle and let's use multiple copy manipulation in order to copy it to the other side of the substrate. Next, a working coordinate system is aligned to global coordinates. Now, let's hold Ctrl key and click on the bodies in the project tree. Next, all bodies are united. That way, we will create a new, single body for the whole antenna. The next step is defining dielectric material properties. In Whipple D, this means that we define a new domain. We specify a dielectric using the symbols defined earlier. After that, we can assign a domain to a region as appropriate. After defining domain specification of the region as domain 2, all faces are automatically defined as boundaries between this dielectric and free space. Further, we need to specify the metallic ground and metallic patch. 
Note that WIPLD allows specifying of an infinitely thin metallization, and this type of metallization will be defined in the next two steps. Faces of the patch and ground plane should be selected and specified as metallic to represent composite boundaries between dielectric and free space. In order to save computer resources and work with half of the model, we make sure that keep solids is unchecked and remove the parts of the model positioned along the negative side of the Y plane. A probe is created next. We draw a line immersed in the dielectric, which represents the second domain in our project. We set probe radius and the position of the probe. Let us escape the drawing mode and let's set selection level slash vertex and choose select by single click. Let's define an excitation. Actually, we select the first vertex, press and hold CTRL and select the second vertex. Then we create a generator. Electrical connection between the wire and the face must be created. It will be done with defining junctions slash vertex list. The next step is defining appropriate symmetry plane and automatic edging. Automatic edging will enable us better modeling of critical current changes in the vicinity of edges on borders of domains. Modeling of the patch antenna is completed. The next step will be defining the directions where a radiation pattern will be calculated. We select to calculate the radiation pattern in one direction in the phi and in one direction in the theta plane, meaning that in this case we will only examine a value in the main direction of patch antenna radiation. Now we can save and run the project. After the simulation is finished, we display S11 in decibels. Also, we set appropriate range. Finally, we display calculated radiation depending on a frequency. Usage of user-friendly WIPLD ProCAD interface enables very easy and very fast modeling of patch antenna. The simulation of the patch antenna with dielectric is fast and accurate. Usage of symmetry plane enables reduction of a number of unknowns and wise utilization of your simulation resources in more general case. Thank you for your attention. For further information, please visit our website.